everyone. It's Chelsea from Paper Rock 2 Studio. And today I'm sharing with you my uh, Art Joy of Sharing art community over on Facebook's September Challenges. I decided to combine these two challenges together into one art journal page. This is the Pick a Stick Challenge with the randomly one, one word drawn prompts and then the mood board challenge and the way the colors and shapes seem to line up between the two I thought it would be fun to just do them together. So the first pick a stick challenge prompt is pool and you know it would have been kind of fun to make a, a summer themed page but we're rolling into fall now even though it doesn't seem that much like it here in Arizona. So I decided to use that prompt as if it means to pool up. And so I thought watercolor and a lot of water would be a good choice for this. I decided to use this um, deco art stencil because the second prompt is arrow and it has this arrow pattern on it in chevrons if you want to call it that. But also I'm using the colors that are coming from the pick a stick which is is pecan and stream and then I'm also throwing in some of that goldish color which is coming from the mood board and I, I put some pixie spray which is an eye craft product on the back of this stencil if you enjoy perfect stenciling stenciling with watercolors is not the way to go but if you like something really organic and random and unpredictable this is really fun so you use this loads tack spray and the only one I recommend is this this pixie spray other stencil adhesives stay on the stencil and get it all sticky and then it sticks to the other stencils Blah. but the pixie spray one is basically one use and then you have to spray it again it doesn't stay tacky so you spray it on the back you wave it around for about a minute and then you can put it down and it helps to retain some of the stenciliness and depending on how dry you go with the watercolor you can really get a good effect with it so like I said the second prompt was arrow and I decided I wanted to build up some more on my background um, with some collage I have this one piece which was uh, a laser print that I got from Jeannie B. Aaron's designs. Um, we do a digital background swap and this was one of them at some point and I didn't use the whole paper and so I had a little bit left and it was the right colors and it also had those chevron shapes on it. And then I also got a thinner piece of paper and some ink tents uh, block and I I stencil rubbed some of that same arrow pattern. So I've got a lot of places here where I've got this arrow pattern and then this other piece of paper which is also from a digital background swap at some point has these round spun marks on it which are kind of hard to see in the video but um, they reminded me of that stack of hay bales that I had on the mood board. So I picked out these pieces I kind of laid them out and then glued them down using some Yoohoo glue stick. This uh, comes out blue and dries clear. And then I kind of uh, pat it down and smooth it out with a, a, a baby wipe just to make sure that there's not excess glue hanging out. And also to, that water in the, blue, in the baby wipe kind of helps smooth everything down. And um, I used a piece of scratch paper so that I can go over the edges and get the glue everywhere on the back of the paper but these are just some scraps of papers that I thought really went with the color and theme of what I was doing so that is the prompt arrow so once I get everything glued down really well I do add some more color around some of the areas just to make everything more cohesive I needed to add in some more of that yellowy color from the mood board that kind of I don't know I, I think it's almost a Naples yellow or maybe a little bit of ochre and then some brown some of the pecan brown just here and there to make everything more balanced and then I go ahead and put away my watercolors and I've pretty I've got a pretty nice background I'm pretty happy with it so moving on the next prompt prompt number three is pen and I also really 
I, I was really in, inspired by the sheepdog on the mood board. I think he's so adorable. In fact, if he was my dog, I would name him Titan Buff. And um, he just looks like Titan Buff. You know, he's kind of kind of a big dog, and he's he's that color. So I decided to use my pen to draw a sheepdog that I could feature on my art journal page, and I'm using Faber Castell pit pins which I use for illustration which are permanent because they are India ink in the pen and I start out by drawing the nose and the face uh, seems like sh like sheepdogs are happy to me this is my impression they're happy they're you know kind of floppy and happy and goofy they've always got their tongue out and so that was the kind of image I was going for um, lots of hair lots of I guess hair kind of like a sheep. Maybe that's one of the reasons they're called sheepdogs. Also, they probably herd, which would be the other reason they could herd sheep. But um, cute dogs. If if I had the space and the patience, I would have one because they're so cute. Uh, they seem so happy, and that's what we need. That's that's what I need. Happy, happy something going on around here. So once I was done drawing with my pen. And this is on a dictionary page, by the way, um, which seemed like the right kind of off-white color. Then I decided to um, continue on to attach because I wanted to attach a quote to my page. Sometimes that's the way to go. Sometimes a quote will really um, either fit your page or inspire your page. And I was looking for quotes about fall and September and I found this one from uh, David James Thoreau which I thought would be perfect because it says September in it which this is all about the September prompts also it talks about how we still have sun and it's still warm but things are are changing and moving on to the fall time and how the creatures are basking in the last bit of sun before it starts to cool off. And of course, my sheepdog is a creature. So I just, I thought it worked out really well. I decided to combine um, stamping, rubber stamping with handwriting. And so I'm using a potting soil colored, which is a brown uh, archival ink pad to stamp some of the words in the quote and then I'm going to write with my hands and the pen again I'm using the pen a lot that's a, a good prompt this month I guess and um, write the rest of the quote in my handwriting so this is another scrap that I had that had the right kind of colors on it and um, I'm going to bring those colors in some more with the next prompt which is I think punch you look and make sure yeah, the fifth prompt is punch. If you guys don't know about the pick a stick challenge, we've been doing this now for five, at least five, maybe six years. It is a, I have a big bucket and so does Peg. We have a big bucket of sticks that have prompts on them. I mean, there's about 500 sticks in the bucket and we randomly draw them. There's no, there's no planning. There's no, um, you know, forethought in this. We randomly draw the sticks and we put them in this format. There's two colors to use, and then there are eight others, and we give you six. The first six, you use them, and you use them in order. If you get stuck, you can change one of them out for one of what we call the wild cards, the other two, and I am going to do that on this one. Um, or you can use all eight if you want to in order, but the only only rule is that you do the first six and you do them in order. You can put things up, up in front of it in, in between or behind the, the prompts. You can put whatever you want. The only rule is just to use the six and use them in order. And you can interpret them any way you want. Most of them are, you know, interpreted in many different ways. So I just finish attach. And that was attaching my quote to the page. And I used a little bit of glue stick just because I don't trust washi tape. <laughs> and then I added some different washi tapes to make it more interesting and kind of put like a little frame, a little funky frame around my attached quote. So the next prompt is punch. So I was really interested in those stacked hay bales on the mood board. And I decided to make something like that. Um, 
to tuck in behind my sheepdog and to also uh, mirror that same kind of goldish color that I'm using here in the foreground. So I got out some different scraps of paper and they're all in that color family. I've got one that's actually some packing paper that has a lot of texture. And then the others are just, you know, painty papers with different types of paint on them. And I punch with the circle punch out these shapes to make these hay bales in the background behind my sheepdog. So then I put the sheepdog down over the top of that. And now I have kind of a focal area, two focal areas. So then I didn't want to use prompt six rag because I've already got enough texture on this. I don't need to do anything with rags. So I um, switched it out for color, you know, like coloring. I decided to use that prompt in the way of coloring. But first I decided to go back to pin and draw some wheat stalks because um, in September where I grew up, it was harvest time and there was a lot of wheat. And I also uh, am in a family that my father-in-law worked at, the actually ran the flour mill in my town. So wheat and wheat harvest and those type of things and also these colors of like blue sky and gold fields, because when the wheat's ripe, everything is gold colored. Um, that's very September to me. So I drew some wheat stalks with my pen before moving on to finishing. I decided to color with Neo Color to water soluble crayons and a water brush. So I do start out by applying the crayons directly to the paper and then blending with the water brush. This has water in the barrel and so when I squeeze it some water comes out onto the bristles and makes a nice wet brush for me to blend with and I'm coloring in my little sheepdog and making them more dynamic with color and shadow using uh, grays, browns, and then of course the red tongue. <laughs> because that's like a big feature, I think, on the sheepdog. And yeah, it's just coloring, you know? You guys understand coloring, right? <laughs> I add in some other lighter colors, uh, some kind of a Caucasian skin color, sort of, like a tannish peach, and some light gray, um, and then some darker brownish gray taupe type colors just coloring in, blending, and then I need to move on to giving some highlights. So I get out my white fine tip Posca pen and um, add some highlights to the eyes and nose where the nose would be wet. My pen was being a jerk. <laughs> it didn't want to come out. And then uh, just like sketchy, sketchy white highlights with the Posca pen. That is a pen that has acrylic in it. So it also dries permanently. So I've got com a real mixed media combination of water soluble media along with permanent media. And it really makes this piece mixed media. And then of course you add in collage on top of that. It's very mixed, but um, a lot of fun. Then I apply some of this golden wheat color to the wheat stalks by scratching the crayon onto the scratch paper and then picking it up with the water brush which is a little bit different technique but works works and you know makes it more blendy blendy i also added shadows by using a very dark uh, van dyke brown that's kind of a real grayed out brown color to add shadows around my dog and around the wheat giving the dog a place to sit on the ground I added some ink around the edges and um, kind of framed it in with some of that brown ink. And then I added some more highlight. There was some, some expressed ink from the Posca pen on the scratch paper where I was getting the Posca pen. I was pumping it to make it work. And I used that by picking it up with the, with the water brush as well. And that's pretty much all that I did to this page. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, 
please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe. Turn on your notification bells. Pin this on Pinterest or Facebook. Share it with your friends. Um, all those things. I'm really happy when you do those things because they help my channel grow. And we are slowly growing. So that's good. Um, the close-ups will be coming up. And the link to um, this in real time will be below as well. Thanks. Bye-bye.